So I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, and that's Arms Directory. Arms Directory is the only two-way protected social network and marketplace. You can post your favorite pics. You can talk about acquiring things and local events in the area, and also post videos of your favorite upgrades. I want to thank them for being the sponsor of this video. You can check them out at armsdirectory. You know what. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. I'm going to show you, uh, show you, I'm going to show you a letter from some Senate Democrats that to me proves the ATF is being used uh, to be weaponized against us gun owners, proves it beyond any shadow of doubt. You let me know what you think down below. But what's curious about this letter is on, in black and white on paper, it's Congress who makes the laws asking a three-letter agency, in this case the ATF, who can't make law, to like make their final rule that much more difficult and have more teeth so that it can accomplish the effect of a new law without them being able to make the law because the law would never pass. <laughs> You're going to want to sit by and watch this one. Here on screen is a letter that was actually sent a couple days ago. It took me a little longer than usual to get the copy of this letter. Um, this is from 14 clowns in the Senate. I'll show you who they are in a minute. But this is going out to Merrick Garland, who is the Attorney General, as well as Steve Dettelbach, who is now the Director of the ATF. And it says, We write to encourage the Department of Justice and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives to issue enforcement guidance to clarify the definition of frame or receiver final rule better known as the ghost gun rule, to ensure that it meets the goal of enforcing the law and stopping the proliferation of these deadly and untraceable firearms that can be acquired without a background check. This is all lies. The rule is intended to regulate nearly complete frames and receivers that are the core components used to construct ghost guns. Under the final rule, effective August 24th of 2022, Readily completed firearms and receivers are subject to the same regulations as traditional firearms, licensing, background check, and serialization requirements. If the ghost gun rule is fully and properly implemented, the department and ATF will be better able to protect the public from violent gun crimes and gun trafficking and help law enforcement solve the crimes in which these firearms are used. That paragraph is riddled with lies. Let's continue. Notwithstanding the ghost gun rule, ghost gun companies have continued to sell the parts and tools to make these dangerous firearms, contending that the final rule fails to cover them and their products. These companies have adopted the position that selling nearly complete frames and receivers without the tools, commonly known as jigs, or instructions to complete them means that their products are not firearms under federal law, and the ATF has said such in court. Of the 100 companies previously known to sell unserialized and nearly complete frames and receivers, dozens remain engaged in that business, including selling nearly complete unserialized frames and receivers, as well as offering the standalone tools and equipment with directions to help purchasers complete them. The final rule, however, is clear and unambiguous. A nearly complete frame or receiver is a firearm. The rule does not cover only frames and receivers sold as part of a kit, but also frames and receivers that can be readily completed. Indeed, enforcing the rule only against sellers of kits would be a colossal loophole that would swallow the rule because the outcome is one and the same. Both kits and standalone frames and receivers can readily be completed, assembled, restored, or otherwise converted to an operational frame or receiver. The text of the ghost gun rule is consistent with other steps ATF has taken to ensure that unfinished frames and receivers are treated as firearms. For example, ATF has rescinded prior determination letters that ruled nearly complete frames or receivers are not firearms and has required manufacturers to resubmit those parts for review. Now, there is a lawsuit going on. Fires Policy Coalition is suing over the ETF's ghost gun rule. That's the Vanderstock case. And the judge has said uh, in issuing a limited uh, 
injunction in this case that just because something may be something in the future does not make it such now. So these uh, senators are absolutely lying because the judge has said just because something may become a firearm in the future doesn't make it a firearm now. And that's exactly worth the saying. These blocks of aluminum or this chunk of plastic could one day be turned into a firearm. Yes, but that doesn't mean they're a firearm now. <laughs> and they're lying right to the ATF. These parts and ghost guns made from them pose a serious and severe threat to the public and to law enforcement. In May of 2021, the Senate Committee on the Judiciary Subcommittee on the Constitution heard testimony from leading experts and law enforcement officials that ghost guns are becoming the preferred instruments for criminals and violent extremists. The fastest growing gun violence menace in the nation. <laughs> a crock of lies. These firearms have been used in school and mass shootings, in domestic violence incidents, in domestic terrorism, and in police shootouts resulting in officer injuries and deaths. This threat continues to increase as the number of ghost guns recovered at potential crime scenes grows exponentially. In 2016, law enforcement recovered 1,758 ghost guns at potential crime scenes across the U.S. The number of recovered ghost guns more than doubled in 2018 and more than doubled again in 2020. The problem with their stats is if somebody scratches out a serial number, if a criminal tries to obliterate it, they're calling that a ghost gun. So this is more lies. In 2021 alone, law enforcement recovered at least 19,344 ghost guns at potential crime scenes. That these firearms are untraceable only makes it more difficult for law enforcement to trace crime guns, develop leads, and solve crimes. Between January 1st and 2016, and March 4th of 2021, ATF attempted to trace almost 23,946 recovered ghost guns, but could only complete 151 traces. In the remaining 23,795 instances, absent other investigative leads and information, the crimes in which those firearms were used go unsolved. The ghost gun rule was promulgated to stop the proliferation of ghost guns, to mitigate the threat these firearms pose to our communities and help law enforcement at every level do their jobs. To that end, we urge the department and ATF to issue enforcement guidance to make clear that when determining whether a frame or receiver may be readily converted into a functional firearm, ATF will consider whether equipment, tools, and instructions that facilitate completion are available. Otherwise, we risk allowing violent criminals, domestic terrorists, and school shooters arming themselves with these easy to get untraceable firearms without a background check. In particular, we urge the department and ATF to confirm that how ATF reviews the readily convertible nature of the nearly complete frame or receiver will not be limited to what tools, equipment, and instructions are included in the same sale or distribution of the parts sold, but rather premised on the tools, equipment, and instructions that are readily available to the general public including those easily obtainable online through third parties. We also encourage the department and ETF to provide information about the enforcement actions that will be taken to hold accountable the ghost gun companies who continue to flaunt the final rule and sell ghost gun parts. We applaud and commend the work the department and ETF have done to protect the public from ghost guns, including this final rule. It is now incumbent upon the department and ETF to see that it is enforced and enforced strongly. This guidance would help ensure just that. And this is signed by Richard Blumenthal, Chris Murphy, Dick Durbin, Ed Markey, Diane Feinstein, Robert Menendez, Chris Van Hollen, Cory Booker, Alex Padilla, Sheldon Whitehouse, Elizabeth Warren, Maisie Hirono, Jack Reed, and Bob Casey Jr. Now what they're saying is, come on ETF, can't you do a little more to do our job for us? Because there's no way we can pass a law that makes guns illegal but if you really try hard enough, you can do our dirty work for us behind the scenes. And they put it on paper. <laughs> uh, like I said, the lies are, are plentiful in this letter. They don't care about helping law enforcement solve crimes. Believe you me, if you think that this is the reason they're doing this, you're living under a rock and not just from the Geico commercial. Uh, they also don't care about our freedoms. They want to take away the one thing that keeps them from keep obtaining total control, and that's an armed populace. The ATF has said in court, testified that owning a chunk, or what's termed an 80% lower, 
is not illegal. You can still buy and sell those, which is why they're still being bought and sold. You just can't sell them with all the tools and instructions together. Now, if you're gonna tell people that they can't sell a drill bit, then how are people gonna build houses if they can't buy drill, drill bits? If you're gonna tell people that they can't send, sell drills or, or uh, presses, then how are we gonna keep manufacturing items in this country? Guys and gals, make no mistake, they're only after one thing and one thing only, and that's our freedom, the right to keep and bear arms. And they will try and try and try. And there is movement on that frame and receiver lawsuit, and it's not going the ATF's way, which is a good thing. If you wanna stay up to date on everything that's going on, whether it's good, bad, ugly, or indifferent in this Second Amendment community, Subscribe to Guns and Gadgets. You might be one of the 2,600 people that were uh, unsubscribed in the last, I don't know, 15 hours or so. Not just me, it's a couple other channels too. We've all been chatting. So check your subscriptions on all the channels you follow regularly and uh, resubscribe if you have to. Also hit that like, share it, and comment down below. That'll help us all out greatly. And uh, until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, and carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. Because that's what the Second Amendment is for, and that's what the totalitarian tyrants can't stand, which is why we like doing it so much. Y'all have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.